Yo. I, uh, Yo. Got the camera for you. Okay, dope. Yeah. You talking to anybody in here? Nope. It's so weird. I could have sworn I heard what, you know, whatever. Uh, you ready to go? Yeah, just grab my backpack. All right, let's do it. Who the fuck are you? Uh, well, I think it's time we uh, address this guy. As I'm sure many of you are aware of at this point, I've been shooting on a new camera. And no, it's not the A7S III, which is what we're shooting on right now. Sorry, A7 III. Uh, it's this guy, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. This is the first cinema camera in my collection, and while I must say I was a little skeptical at first, maybe even slightly intimidated, overall, my first impressions have been pretty incredible. The 6K RAW out of this, the image quality alone is enough to buy this camera. The footage provides flexibility that is truly unmatched when it comes to color, dynamic range, ease of use. I mean, the Blackmagic RAW codec edits so seamlessly inside of Resolve and Premiere. It's buttery smooth, so much smoother than the footage that comes out of the Sony cameras, even on a really hefty workstation like this or a maxed out MacBook Pro. Everything this camera has to offer, it's truly unmatched, especially for its price, which if I haven't said it yet, $2,000. If you're asking me, it sounds like the perfect camera. And in some cases it could be, but every camera has its downfalls. And the biggest I've noticed with this one is you really have to rig it out in order to get the most out of it. That's pretty much how it goes with cinema cameras. So there's really no way around it. Of course, many of you guys have been commenting about the rig. So I wanted to walk you guys through all the parts that I chose, how it fits into my workflow and my overall impressions of the camera. Okay, so first things first, anytime I'm working with camera rigs, I love to use this little tool from Small Rig. It's got a flathead for your tripod screws, Allen keys for just about everything. The camera, of course, we got the Black Magic, and it's inside of the Tilta cage. I didn't feel the need to take it out. The lens I mainly use is the Sigma 18 to 35. I've got this manual focus ring on it manual focus, follow focus ring on it from Movo. Uh, it's an adjustable one, makes for a pretty simple installation and plus I can put it on different lenses. It comes with a variety of sizes. Of course, we're using the Samsung T5 SSDs and when I install the little USB cable that comes with the tilt cage normally you put it this way facing outward, but I like to put it the other direction. Yes, you can't thread it into the little holder screw, but it makes cable management a lot cleaner in my opinion. So I think it just looks nicer. For the base plate, I'm using this Nicey rig base plate. It's a 15 millimeter rod base plate, pretty simple. And then on top of it, I have this Arca Swiss dovetail plate from Small Rig. You'll see why we use that in just a sec. Go ahead and put in the 15 millimeter rods into the base plate, tighten them down, get them nice and even. We'll go ahead and put on an Arca Swiss plate onto the bottom of the rig. Now we can nicely pop this on to the base plate and I can take it on and off really quick and simple if I want to switch between a handheld setup and this fully rigged out setup with the follow focus and battery power. I have the side focusing handle from Tilta. This one's really awesome because it will connect to the Nucleus Nano for wireless focus control, but also you can power the camera with it, which is pretty neat. Of course, we have the Tilta Nucleus Nano, which I am in love with. Now, when it comes to mounting the Nucleus Nano on the rails, I actually like to mount it backwards, as you'll see here. And there's a very particular reason for that. And maybe it's just me, but I don't like the default direction that the motor turns the lens when it focuses. It's something about it just feels a little weird. So I like to flip the direction. Maybe it's just me, but I don't know. It makes it a lot easier for me to manual focus more accurately. I like using these little Velcro strips to tie down extra cables kind of laying around. So the USB cable that goes between the Nucleus Nano and the side handle, I secure that down onto the rail to make the Things cleaner. For a battery solution, I'm using this small rig NPF power plate that is really awesome because it offers two uh, outputs for power, 12 volt and 7.4 volt, I think it is, or 7.2 volt. Sony NPF batteries are super common. They're super cheap. 
They're my favorite for powering cameras like this just because they're lightweight. You can get a ton of them for super inexpensive. I do also have a V-mount battery plate as well as a couple of V-mount batteries that I use from time to time, but I've really found myself using this more. It's lighter, it's easier to work with, and the batteries are just quicker to charge and pack around in bags. The 12 volt output goes into the little mini XLR power adapter. And you'll see here that I accidentally did this a little bit backwards. I had to take off the side handle really quick to pop on the power cable. Might as well plug in the HDMI cable while we're here. Speaking of the HDMI cable, this is one from ZILR. I'm not entirely sure what the brand is, but I found it on Amazon. It's a super slim cable. It has worked flawlessly, so I highly recommend it. Pop in the battery and now we got power. Now for the matte box, I decided to go with the Tilta mini matte box. A lot of people think these are just for show, but they really do actually have an important use when it comes to filtration and also blocking lens flares with the flag on the top. This matte box works basically the same way that the Polar Pro Base Camp does. It has a thread on ring and then the matte box itself just clamps on. Super lightweight, super simple, and it's not too terribly big. And so for this rig, I think it fits really nicely. I chose this matte box in particular because it works with circular filters. Frankly, I'm not really interested in the 4x5.6 filters, nor do I really have the budget. And so circular filters for me have still worked really well. With a little hack with some step-up rings, you can make basically any circular filter and variable NDs work in here, which is amazing. For the monitor, I'm using this Portkeys LH5H. This is an incredible monitor. Portkeys actually sent this out to me when they saw that I started using the Black Magic and wanted to know if I wanted to give it a try. Long story short, this is a 5-inch monitor that's super bright, but also it has wireless function that allows you to connect Bluetooth to the Blackmagic and you can actually control basically all of the functions of the Blackmagic through this screen. Many of you who have used the Blackmagic before will know that it is a pain in the ass dealing with that touch screen on the back to change all of your controls. And so this monitor alleviates that problem and you can control everything from here, even starting and stopping recording. Truly impressed with this monitor. In daylight situations, it's plenty bright enough. It does eat through batteries a little bit quickly, but it's small, lightweight. I highly, highly recommend checking out this monitor. If you guys have a black magic, it's definitely a must have in my opinion. The monitor mount I'm using is from Urig. I, again, with these Chinese names, this is basically just just a little swivel 360 monitor mount that mounts via cold shoe. This thing is amazing. Small rig makes one. I think Polar Pro even makes one. Long story short, I mean, they're all basically the same thing, but I think this one matches all of the rig components I have pretty nicely and it's held up really well. A little quick tip, I like to thread the HDMI cable through the center of that top handle. And then I like to use another one of those little Velcro ties kind of right at the base of the monitor to take care of some of the extra slack that the HDMI my cable has. I think this makes for a much cleaner looking setup and there's still plenty enough room to be able to swivel the monitor around 180 degrees if I'm filming myself. It sort of just ties the whole setup together and makes everything nice and neat. So there you have it. That is my Blackmagic Pocket 6K rig build. Honestly, I gotta say this is probably one of the most exciting cameras I've ever used. It has really forced me to slow down think a lot more about my lighting and composition, getting everything right in camera. It's definitely not the most forgiving. The fact that it has no autofocus, it's not an insane camera in low light. You really do have to get your exposure correct in camera, but that's sort of what the cinema camera workflow is all about. We're so used to and spoiled with nowadays having flip out screens and incredible autofocus that literally locks to your eye and you have these insane sensors that can literally shoot at any ISO. It doesn't even matter at this point. So working with something like this, having to rig it out, having to learn how to get good with manual focus, it's been a huge change of pace, but it's definitely a welcomed change because I really do think it's going to help me improve as a cinematographer. With time and patience, the images that come out of this camera are insane. I mean, you can match them pretty easily against reds and Alexas, of course, with the right amount of time in post-production and color grading. But to sum things up, if you're looking for a video camera, keep in mind a dedicated video camera because this can't take photos, not technically. This is hands down, in my opinion, the best bang for buck video camera on the market. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.